pray and get started. Father God, we just thank you for this opportunity again to come together and to fellowship with one another. Thank you, Father, for each and every one that's here tonight, Lord. Thank you that no one sits in here in discomfort or in pain. Thank you that as your word goes forth, whatever they need, they shall receive, Father. We just give you praise for you say signs and wonders shall accompany your word. Father, we thank you that as we study your word tonight, we thank you for revelation knowledge flowing freely unhindered, uninterrupted by any satanic or demonic spirit. We thank you, Father, that we decrease and you increase. All of you and none of us are known our ears to hear, our hearts to receive, and our spirit to contain your word. And Father, I thank you that as we study your word, I thank you that our minds are being renewed and our lives are being changed. We will never, ever be the same again. Thank you, Father, for thanking through my mind and speaking through my vocal cords all that you'd have me to say to these your sheep. And Father, we'll be ever so mindful to always give you the praise and always give you the glory. It's in Jesus' name and everyone in agreement say amen. amen. We want to welcome our radio and internet audience tonight. My name is Pastor James Anderson and I'm speaking on the subject of love. We're, we're talking about, I think, is, is, a, is a very important subject, and tonight I'm going to show you just how important this subject is. A lot of people neglect to operate in love, all right? The reason why I say that, because we've had people come to this church, and, and they, they've made statements that they've been in other churches, and they've never seen love shown the way it's shown in this church, and that shouldn't be. Because every ministry is a room in the house of God. You understand what I'm saying? It's a, every ministry is a room in the house of God. The body of Christ is the house of God, and, and every ministry is a different room. But in every room, God is present, should be present in the room. And if he's present in the room, then his love should be present in the room. That's what draws people in. That's what drew you and I to Christ. His love. He loved us enough to be sacrificed for us. Okay? So we need to show that same love that he showed. We need to show that same love to others. Amen? All right. So we're, we're on a series that we have entitled The Believer's Love Walk. And the first, this is volume one. And I, I think I got about five or six volumes. So. Uh, the f volume one here, we're talking about walking in love is a commandment. What we're doing is we are approaching love from the standpoint of, a, of it being a requirement. Not a requirement to be a Christian, not a requirement to get God to love us or to accept us, but a requirement so that we can operate in the fullness of God's power and gifts. If you want the gifts of God to operate uh, at its highest in your life, then you have to walk in love. Amen? I want to show you this. Love makes our actions and gifts useful. We're, we're, we're going to look at 1 Corinthians chapter 13, but we're going to do it from the Amplified Bible. And I, I asked Duke to put it on the, proje on the projector, not the overhead. He got on me about using the term overhead. <laughs> So we asked him to put it on the projector. And, and, and we're going to read verses 1 through 3, and we're going to read verse 13 down the line. But we're going to start off with verses 1 through 3, okay? On the Amplified, it reads, verse 1 says, if I, can, if I can speak in the tongues of men and even of angels, but have not love, then it says that reason, reasoning intentional. I like that term intentional that's used in the Amplified. That means that you have to do it on purpose. Do you understand what I'm saying? When you do it intentionally, you're doing it on purpose. Love has to be done on purpose. Love is not how we feel. We don't, we don't, we don't respond to how we feel. We respond to what the Word of God says. All right? So when you operate in love, when you operate in love, you've made a decision to do it. Okay? Even forgiving others is based on you making a decision. And you may not feel like it, but you, you do it intentionally. Why do we do it intentionally? Because the word tells us to do it. Correct? Are y'all okay with that? 
Once again, it says, if Paul said, if I can speak in the tongues of men and even angels but have not love, that reason, reasoning, intentional, spiritual devotion, such as is inspired by God's love for and in us, I am only a noisy gong or a clanging cymbal. He's saying if I'm speaking in tongues or if I'm speaking in my regular language, if love is not the motivation behind it, all I'm doing is making noise. Verse 2 says, and if I have prophetic powers, now look at this, the gift of interpreting the divine will and purpose. If you got the gift to be able to interpret God's will and purpose, he said, and then if you understand all the secret truths and mysteries, that's awesome. Now, now listen, understand all truths and mysteries of the kingdom and possess all knowledge. And he said, if I have sufficient faith so that I can remove mountains but have not love, God's love in me, I am nothing, a useless nobody. Now, the qualities that he mentioned here, I don't believe no one has arrived to that point. But he's saying, if you were at that point and you didn't have love, then you are nothing. You are a useless nobody. You see, you, do you see the importance of love here? Yes. Verse 3, he says, Even if I dole out all that I have to the poor in providing food, and if I surrender my body to be burned in order that I may glory, but have not love, God's love in me, I gain nothing. He's saying, if you go out and you feed every hungry person you see, if you give yourself as a martyr, you give your body to be burned as a martyr, and you're not doing it out of love, then you gain nothing. Are you, are you here? This is the importance of you and I walking in love. Paul tells us that if we're not operating in love, our use of the gifts will not benefit us to the fullest. Now, I do believe that there may be a small degree of benefit involved, but not to the level of degree of benefit that God intended. Okay, there is a benefit, especially for those that we're ministering to, they will benefit from it. But for you, if you are not doing it out of love, then you won't, you won't achieve or reach the highest degree of benefit that God wants you to. Okay, you understand that? When we don't love others, what we do is of very little value to us. Now, before I read verse 13 on there, I want to read the Living Bible, paraphrase these three verses. Okay, now listen carefully. It says, verse 1, if I had the gift of being able to speak in other languages without learning them. I like that. We had a lady years ago that came and we was in our other building. She was a minister, uh, 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 what you call them? To missionary, thank you, to China. She never took the language up. She never went to school for it. And because God called her to go to China, he gave her the, the ability to understand Chin Chinese and speak in Chinese. That's awesome. That's a, that's, see, that's an anointing. So that's what he's talking about. In, see, that's why I like the Living Bible. It says, if I had the gift of being able to speak in other languages without learning them and could speak in every language there is, all of, there is in all of heaven and earth, but didn't love others, I would only be making noise. See, the Living Bible letting you know if you're not loving others, all you're doing is making noise. Verse 2, if I had the gift of prophecy and knew all about what is going to happen in the future, knew everything about everything, <laughs> but didn't love others, what good would it do? Even if I had the gift of faith so that I could speak to a mountain, now this is the Living Bible, and make it move, I would still be worth nothing at all without love. If, you had the, if, if your faith was developed to the point where you can walk out and speak to a mountain and tell it to move, but it wasn't motivated by love, it's worth nothing. Verse 3, he says, If I gave everything I have to poor people, and if I were burned alive for preaching the gospel, but didn't love others, it would be of no value whatever. No value at all. 
You go out and you be a martyr. You give your body as a martyr. You, you feed people and you just die for the gospel. But there's no love behind it. No value there at all. This is, this is, this is serious business. If you, it, this tells us that our faith is affected by our love walk. It may be that you're not seeing the manifestation of what you need because of your love walk. Your faith may not be at its highest level of application because of your love walk. Because of how you're treating the person next to you, or how you're treating the person at home, or how you got unforgiveness in your heart towards somebody that's done something to you. You got to forgive everybody. And I'm telling you, it takes faith to do that now. Because think about in Luke chapter 17, the, the, Jesus was talking about when uh, somebody do something to you, you have to forgive them seven times seven, right? In a day. That's right. Luke, Luke brings it out. In a day. And the first thing the disciples say, well, Lord, increase our faith. <laughs> That's, that's, that's the only place where they asked God to increase their faith was when it came to having to walk in love. Because I'm telling you, this, 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 this love that God wants you and I to walk in, it takes him to do it. You can't do it on your own. That means because this love is, is, is the same love that Jesus displayed. When he got on the cross and said, Father, forgive them for they know not what, he do, what they do. That's the same kind of love you and I have to walk in. When people do something to us, no matter what it is, you have to forgive them. And you're forgiving them not for their sake as much as it is for your sake. Because here, this, these verses tell us that when we're not walking in love then we, and we're operating in these gifts, they don't benefit us. Amen? Y'all yeah. mighty quiet. <laughs> Great faith, acts of dedication or sacrifice, and miracle working power has little effect without love. Great faith acts of dedication or sacrifice and miracle working power has little effect without love. Love is the greatest gift of them all. Look at verse 13 from the Amplified. It reads, and so faith, hope, love abide. Then it says faith, conviction, and belief respecting man's relation to God and divine things. Hope, it says, joyful and confident expectation of eternal salvation. See, biblical hope is joyful, confident expectation. When you operate in biblical hope, you are joyful, you should be joyful, and you should be in expectation. Worldly hope is wishful thinking. Worldly hope says, it might happen or it might not happen. Godly hope says it will happen and we are in expectation of it happen, happening. And what faith does, faith brings what we're hoping for into the now realm. All hope, biblical or worldly hope, is always future. Faith brings it into the now realm. Faith, faith doesn't operate by a time clock. Okay, faith says it's now, you have it now. Even though you may not see it, even though your senses can't, can't dictate it, I mean de detect it, you still have it now by faith. Are you understanding what I'm saying? Y'all got to put a smile on your face or something. Y'all got some serious, and, and Brother Richard, the most serious looking one out there. <laughs> you are serious, okay. <laughs> I got you. I love you, man. <laughs> then, it says, <laughs> then it says love, it, 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 then it defines love. Now I like this, look, look what it says. Love, true, which is sincere, true affection for God and man. See, when you operate in the love that he's talking about in these verses up here about uh, if you want the gifts to work, then you got to have love. Well, he's talking about loving God and man. What did Jesus say was the most important commandment? To love the Lord your God with all your heart, mind, and soul, and with all your strength, right? And then he said the second one is just like it, to love your neighbor 
as yourself. That's loving man. So we got to love God and man. And we're going to talk about that too because there's many people going around, Christians, going around saying how much they love God but they hate their brother and sister. And the Bible said, that's, you a liar. How you going to love God and hate the person that was created in his image? That's like a person saying they love this person but hate their child. When you tell a person you love them and hate their child, you're in trouble. Because they're going to reject your love. Because you, you're telling them that you hate their child. And that's what we do when we say that we love God and hate our brothers and sisters in Christ. We're rejecting his children. It says love, true affection for God and man. Watch this. Growing out of God's love for and in us. These three, but the greatest of these is love. All, out of all the gifts, out of faith and hope, love is the greatest. Our love for God and others is the product of God's love for us and a product of his love in us. For me to love you, I need to recognize how much God loves me. You understand? See, I need to have an understanding of God's love. And one way that I can get up under, this is just one way that I can get an understanding of God's love, is to love you. Is to love you, even if I don't quite understand God's love yet. When I, when I love you according to his instructions, when I forgive you, every time you do something to me, it doesn't matter how many times you do it, uh, what you do. Every time you do something and every time I forgive you, what happens is that I'm learning, my, my mind is clicking now. My mind is saying, well, just like I forgave Richard, God forgave me. So it's helping, my love in you is helping me to understand how much God loves me. You understand? Every time you show love to people, the, according to the word now, not the world's love, the world has contaminated the definition of love. The world's love is really lust. Not the first thing, every time we hear the word lust, first thing we think about is sexual things. But lust is just desiring stuff that you shouldn't have. Okay, it's, it's, it ain't just in a sexual sense. It's, 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 it's just lusting. You could be lusting for somebody's money, uh, lusting for somebody's car. It's just selfishness. That's what the world's definition of love. Matter of fact, one of their sayings is, uh, Self-preservation is the first law of nature. That's what the world says. I used to say that all the time. Look out for number one first. But when you come to the kingdom of God, Joyce Meyer says it's upside down, meaning that you to look out for others before you look out for yourself. Isn't that something? That's love. That's what Jesus did for us. He looked out for us before he looked out for himself. He put himself in harm's way for us because he loved us. And that's the kind of love that we have to show. That's the kind of love that we have to express. And that kind of love is a product of God's love for us and God's love in us. And it is in us. Romans 5 and 5 says the love of God has been shared abroad in our hearts by the Holy Spirit. Amen. Love is more important than all the spiritual gifts exercised in the church body. Love makes all our actions and gifts useful. I like that. I want to be useful to God. In, 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 in verse 2 in the Amplified Bible, it says that if we don't have love, it says I'm nothing and a useless nobody. I don't want to be looked upon as a useless nobody. The world did that. I don't want to be looked upon it in the body of Christ as a useless nobody. So love makes all our actions and gifts useful. Walking in love is a requirement for victorious living. If you want to live victorious, you have to walk in love. I didn't say you have to walk in love to be a Christian. I didn't say you have to walk in love to be accepted by, Jesus, by God. You are accepted by God through Jesus. Ephesians 1 and 6 says we are accepted in the beloved. 
Okay, that word accepted in, in Ephesians 1 and 6 is the same Greek word that Gabriel told Mary when he said, you are blessed and highly favored. Same Greek word. So we are accepted. We are blessed and highly favored in the beloved. Okay, so, so what we do, how can I put this? Our actions, our behavior, how we act doesn't change God's attitude toward us. But our action and our behavior can change our attitude toward God. You understand that? See, God, God's love doesn't change. We change. You can, and, and what happens, you get to a place where if you're doing something you know you ain't got no business doing, the devil will work on you. He'll give you, he'll, he'll cause condemnation to come. He'll make you feel guilty. Okay, and what that and what will happen is you will change your attitude toward God. You start every time something go wrong, you start blaming God because you think God doing it because of what you did. But no, God ain't doing that. You open the door for the enemy, and the enemy now is bringing condemnation on you. And what's happening? You are turning your back. You're pushing yourself away. You stop coming to church. You stop reading your Bible. Stop associating with other believers. Stop praying. All be, see those your act. You change toward God. God's arms. It's always wide open. He said, I'll never leave you nor forsake you. He said, goodness and mercy shall follow you all the days of your life. Okay? So when, when, when you are not experiencing the love of God, it ain't because he's not giving it out. It's because you are rejecting it. That's why it's important for you to understand God's love so that you can love others. And you can get to understand God's love by loving others. Amen? All right. So we're talking in this series, we've already covered uh, believers have been given the commandment to love. We covered love is the greatest commandment. And we covered love is the fulfillment of the law. Okay? I want to start tonight. I know I won't get nearly close to finishing it. But I want to start tonight by saying that, and by the way, what that, that was an introduction that I should have gave y'all from the beginning, okay? <laughs> that was an added message. All right, but we're going to start tonight by talking about believers have a commandment from God to love one another. We, like I said earlier, every ministry is a room just view it as a room in the house of God. We are all family. All right? Just like your natural or earthly born brothers and sisters are your family, so are believers. And I personally believe that believers are closer than the earthly born family. The reason why I say that, what makes Dorothy and brother Chuck sister and brother is blood. Okay? See, blood makes you related to your family, to your sibling, or, or any of your family, okay? And understand this, the blood comes from the man, not from the woman. The woman does not have the blood type of the children. The man does. All the woman does is produce, which I don't mean to belittle, I know, thank God, I'm a man. I've seen, I used to work at the hospital, no way, Jose, would I want to have a baby. Thank you, Jesus, that you gave that to women. <laughs> but what the woman does, she, she gets, you know, she, the, the man drops the seed, the woman fertilizes the seed, and the baby comes through her. But the blood, the DNA, comes from the man. That's why God had to be Jesus' father. Mary being Jesus' mother didn't affect his DNA. That's why he was still born as a, a, a person without sin. Had a man been, had a man had made himself Jesus' dad, he would have been born just like you and I. Okay? So we're, all of us who have accepted Jesus, I said all that, all of us who have accepted Jesus, we're all part of God's household. We're all part of God's family. And just like, I know in the natural siblings and, and relatives fall out, but you know, in the body of Christ, we shouldn't be like that. We have to be, we have to rise above that kind of attitude. We have to love all of our brothers and sisters because we are one household. Duke, I know I didn't give you this scripture, but can you get Galatians 6 and 10 in the Amplifier? 
I want to read that, and I, I close with this. Are y'all understanding this? Galatians 6 and 10. And look what it says. If I can find it here. There it is. In the Old Testament, New Testament. Uh, Flo has a way of doing that. General, how you say it? Ge That's how you find the, like, general electric. Get Galatians, Ephesians, Philippians. Okay. Galatians 6 and 10. From the Amplified, it says, So then, as occasion and opportunity open up to us, let us do good morally to all people, to all people, okay? Not only being useful or profitable to them, but also doing what is for their spiritual good and advantage. That's what he means by doing morally good. We have to live a certain way to help others to grow in their spiritual walk with God, okay? So we have to conduct that, we have to live morally good so that we can be an example to others. But, but let's keep going. Then it says, uh, be mindful to be a blessing, especially, now I like that term especially because now it's putting the importance on the household of God. Especially to those of the household of faith. Those who belong to God's family with you, the believers. You see that? He said that we're to love everybody, but especially your brothers and sisters in Christ. We're part of a household. The body of Christ is a household. And like I say, this ministry is a room in that household. All right? The, the church down the street, I hope, is a, <laughs> is, a, is a ministry, is a room in the household. Okay? What I'm saying is every room that we go in, we should be able to feel at home. Have you ever been to a church where you didn't feel at home? You felt uncomfortable? That shouldn't be. Because we're all the household of the family of God. Amen. And this is what we're going to talk about next week. Next week, we're going to talk about how we're to love our brothers and sisters in Christ. And we're going to focus on that a little bit. Amen. Father, we thank you for your word. We thank you, Lord, that your word is, is teaching us and training us how we are to live and how we are to walk in this love that you've called us to walk in. And we thank you for it. We thank you for Jesus. We thank you for your precious Holy Spirit. Most of all, we thank you for your love. For your love brought forth Jesus and the Holy Spirit to us. And we love you in Jesus' name. Amen. We want to thank our audience, our radio and internet audience for joining us. Once again, I'm Pastor James Anderson of, of Faith International Christian Center. If you're ever in the Bradenton area, we would love for you to stop by and visit us and let us love on you. If not, you can contact us by phone at area code 941-794-1713. Or you can contact us by the World Wide Web Internet, <laughs> www.ficcwordchurch.org. We'd love to hear from you. Thanks. Hallelujah.